Hello everyone. How's everyone going? Let me see if I can bring in professors Felipe and Flavio. One second here. Hello, Leticia. Bring in professor. Hey guys, hey professor. Hello, professor. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good, brother. Everything great. Thank, great good. to be here on this live with you, with you and Professor Flavio. Excited, awesome. It's been a long time since I've seen you, huh? I know, right? Couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fix my camera here real quick. Right there. Right. Got it. Invite Professor Flavio now. Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. Professor what's up? Flavio. How are you, Professor? I'm good, man. How are you guys? What's up, Furão? Good, Professor. How are you? Hey. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too, man. Nice. Good to be here with you guys. Awesome. I was joking, uh, Professor Flavio, with a couple people that uh, Professor Felipe, so R's, when I was a kid in English, R was like a hard word for me to say. Then I like obviously learned how to pr uh, pronounce it properly. But now as I want to learn Portuguese, the R is really hard again for me to say. So it's like, a, I feel like I'm a kid again. And then it seems like the people I interact with the most, they have this, this name. So I'm probably the only person who calls Professor Felipe de la Monica, Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job, brother. You're speaking good. Getting the Portuguese going as well. <laughs> I heard that uh, uh, Professor Dave Weber, the uh, COO of GB North America, he wants to learn Portuguese. So we'll see. That'll be good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think he speaks okay. a little bit already, I guess. Yeah, he's picking it up. He wants to make sure he keeps up with uh, all of the jokes and especially make sure that uh, the Brazilians are not making fun of him here in the office, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let me uh, well, we give some people still, still some time to join. I have a couple of messages, guys, uh, for everyone who's here. Uh, obviously, we're here to talk about the ICP 2022. It's uh, starting November 8th. However, the pre-launch or the pre-registration starts October 18th. So it's in about a week and a half. And uh, for everyone who's here, there's a, a special list. It's called the VIP list. Uh, if you click the link in the Gracie Baja online Instagram bio, it's going to take you to a page. You can actually enter your uh, contact information. And then uh, just before the ICP opens for pre-registration, you're going to get access to uh, three very special things. Uh, the first one's a $50 discount coupon off new registrations for the ICP 2022. Uh, access to a personal branding course has a value of $49 and access to one month free of the Gracie Baja Canva platform. Uh, the Canva platform is a design platform. It's very, very good. Um, I've been using it now for a few months. It's uh, very easy to use if you're someone like myself. I don't have any design skills, but uh, makes things very easy, intuitive, makes you look uh, like a designer. And not only that, there's a lot of Gracie Baja pictures and templates for you to use and make your own uh, creations. So. Uh, in total, this package is $164. It's our gift to you. All you need to do is click our link in the bio, let's go to our uh, VIP page, enter your information, and then you'll stay up to date and get access to these uh, bonuses. So stay tuned for that. So um, guys, if you can hear me, if the sound is good, um, just leave us a note here. Uh, what school you're from, where you guys are, uh, just let us know that it sounds good. As we're doing that, I'll do some uh, quick introductions that I'm hoping you guys can hear. 
I'll start first with Professor Felipe. Professor Felipe, of course, is the head instructor of the Gracie Baja HQ in Irvine, California. Professor Felipe, thank you for being here. Always a pleasure, brother. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Hello, everybody. Hope to have a nice talk with you guys here. It's always a, you know, a blast to be able to have this internet and this connection, this connection that we have, you know, like uh, we are from different parts and, and be able to talk and share stuff, stories and, uh, and connect with the students and, and the professors from, from our team and, and jiu-jitsu as well. Thank you. Nice. Nice. And I see we have some comments coming in. We have GB North Phoenix, which is very close to where uh, I am and Professor Flavio. So uh, Professor Flavio, if you guys are unaware, uh, he is the uh, executive director of GB North America. Um, he's quite busy. I think, Professor Flavio, you have your hands in basically everything these days from North America to events to GB Online and the ICP. So uh, I'll go abroad broad introduction for you, but everyone I'm sure knows Professor Flavio Almeida. Flavio, thank you for being here. Thank you, Ryan. It's good to be here, man. Thanks for putting this together. It's always, a, it's always an honor, you know, to share the stage with uh, you guys and uh, always happy to help, help any way I can. Okay. Well, with that, I was given um, the opportunity to do a, a quick plug here for Professor Felipe Della Monica. So if you guys follow me on Instagram or even GB Online, I think we made some posts. We filmed three programs uh, last week. Professor Felipe was uh, one of the uh, instructors to record a program. It's a very exciting time We uh, at GB Online. We are going to be releasing very soon uh, specialized programs at GB. So um, I know we're talking a little bit about the history of GB on this live. So it's a unique time. Uh, Professor Flavio and Professor Felipe, you're both aware that in the past, Gracie Ba has always released uh, broad topics. So we've released beginner, advanced, uh, GB3 programs with Professor Braulio. Uh, but we've never uh, had many specialized programs. So it's going to be a program on a topic that an, uh, an instructor is an expert in. Uh, Professor Felipe, why don't you let everyone know what what was the the topic you taught last week? I can't answer that half guard. If it's a specialization, <laughs> it's got to be the deep half guard. Did I get that is right? right? Unless it's evolving and there's new things right. that I don't know about. The last time I trained, he still tried the deep half on me. Then we ran out of time. He could have sweeped me. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way, man. I'm excited this project. You know, to be part and to be. You know, the, the, one of the ones teaching the beginning of this project, which I think will be, will be huge in a, you know, in, in a few years from now, imagining how much content we're going to have. But anyways, uh, the GB Online team uh, invited me, asked me to show uh, some of the, my favorite moves. And I was able to, you know, I'm pretty happy the way that, you know, we put it together, the techniques of this mini course. And I'm excited to see how you guys going to think that's going to, you know, how much you, the students can uh, study now and, and improve the game on that uh, subject with the half guard and uh, reverse half guard. So I'm very excited to see and uh, thank you again for the, for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, just like I said, I'm excited to see the future of the, the GP Online platform in a few years from now. It's already great, but I think uh, it's never going to stop developing and it's never going to grow, stop growing and it's just going to make a great platform for the students, for instructors, for us to connect and learn jiu-jitsu and it's everything on once, you know? Nice. You said it. That's it. It's exciting. Um, we even, uh, Professor Flavio, I'm not sure if I share this with you, but it's going to be exciting because not only are the instructors teaching techniques, but uh, they, they put themselves out there. They made themselves vulnerable and they recorded themselves training. So everybody did uh, three three minutes specific training rounds. So we're pretty excited to see that as well. It was nice because nice. when we were recording, we were like, well, should we go uh, uh, just like to pretend? Uh, right? We're like, no, you guys train normal, like a real training. Let's make it real, you know? And, uh, and my, I was training with one of my students, Brown Belt, but he's a young guy, athletic, you know? And he was coming after me and uh, we filming like a three minutes round and we at the end are like uh, tired, sweaty, you know? Like a real <laughs> <thing>. nice. <laughs> nice. 
I have to I have to share something because it's a funny one that uh, we also filmed with Felipe uh, Otavio Souza and Ana Laura Cordero. When I reached out to Professor Otavio, I explained the idea to him, and I'm sure everybody knows Professor Otavio, black belt world champion. He's in competition mode right now. He's preparing for a couple competitions coming up, one at the uh, uh, World Summit in November. And I, I said, I said uh, you know, Professor, are you open to training three rounds? And he said, uh, yeah, how many guys should, should I bring? I was <laughs> like, what? what do you mean, Professor? What do you mean, how many guys? He's like, oh, you know, should I bring my partner and three more guys so I can have a fresh person each round. <laughs> I was like, no, professor, you don't need to bring extra ones. Just a monster, you know, wanting to have the toughest <laughs> rounds he could. But it turned out great. The, he had a, a poor person trying to defend guard passing against right. the Tavio, So Poor person. The poor guy. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we can get into this now. So uh, if you're just joining us, we're here to talk about um, the ICP 2022 that's coming out with course one on November 8th, pre-registration starting in about a week and a half. Um, so this, uh, this conversation, guys, we're going to be talking about the GB values, uh, the core values. If you're not aware of what those are, they are three, brotherhood or sisterhood, integrity and development of GB. And um, I was asked for, for us to, to share some of our, our own experiences with these uh, core values as we dive deeper into the specifics of the ICP. Um, so I'll share perhaps one of mine. I know there's uh, three of us and, and, and three values, but I'll, I think many people want to hear from you guys. So uh, mine, you know, I, brotherhood or the sisterhood of GB is super important to me. I know back when uh, I first traveled to the HQ, I would try to go once a year to either train or go and compete. And as much as uh, I wanted to win a competition, it was uh, just as important for me being in Canada to travel all the way to Irvine or way back in the day to Rio de Janeiro, just to be around everyone and, and stay close with the team. And uh, that was always something that uh, I looked forward to, the brotherhood. The, the family of GB, it's, it's real, um, and uh, it's something that I hold dear to me. Uh, so, Professor Felipe, why don't I uh, start with you? You know, what's, uh, what's been some of your experiences of the core values of GB in your life? Man, that's a great uh, talk because, um, you know, in, the, in Jiu Jitsu, I grew up in Jiu Jitsu, and my whole uh, um, friendships, you know, another day I was thinking, man, all my friends are from Jiu-Jitsu. I don't know if this is good or bad, but I don't have much friends outside Jiu-Jitsu, you know? And uh, all my friends, all the people that I t talk on a daily basis, it's all from Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, those values, you know, like we talk about integrity, the brotherhood, the development. Uh, last week we were talking with Master Liberty, and he said something really nice that, that I was thinking about, that all the values at the end of the day are connected, right? There's not like a isolated from each other. So there's no like brotherhood without integrity. You know, there's no development without the integrity, the, the brotherhood. So all the values are, are together. And when we have, when we think about values that, uh, in my case, I learned a lot, of course, from my family, but also a lot from Jiu Jitsu as I start to train uh, at a young age, you know, having like uh, mentors older than me and guiding us. And as we know, when we go to the like, uh, teenager ages, uh, less we listen to our parents, more we listen to our friends. And I was blessed to be able to, to have good mentors and, you know, people who guided me and inspired me to do things the right way, you know, of, obviously we're not perfect. We make mistakes on a daily basis. But when we, when we think about the values, you pretty much uh, guide us, you know, guide us to, to do things the right way, right? When you think about integrity, respect, uh, the brotherhood, I have a few stories, right? We have many stories, but like, for example, for the brotherhood, which is something that uh, fascinates me, how the brotherhood of jiu-jitsu, how uh, we connect with each other without knowing each other at first, and then, but right away, we feel like we know, you know, our training partners for years. Like, uh, when I moved to United States, you know, I'm, I came in here by myself, and a uh, new country, new language, right? So we have a few challenges. You live in your home for the first time. 
I personally came here when I was like 22 years old. I was young, everything new. Another day I was thinking, you know, like I never felt that I was alone, you know, even that I flew here by myself and, uh, and, I, and, I let, and I was like going out of my comfort zone. There's no moment I've been here for 13 years. I don't remember recording like feeling like, man, I'm alone. I'm here alone. Never. Since day one, I felt home when I arrived here. You know, when I arrived in Gracie Bar HQ in Lake Forest, uh, Professor Flavio was actually there training with uh, Roger Gracie at the time and, and uh, mm -hmm. was right before the World Championship. And like, uh, that's one example of how, uh, you know, the brotherhood of our team, we have that strong connection. And for me to be able to be at GBHQ on a daily basis, and I see people coming in and visit all the time, and people that we never met before, and they come in, and we start talking, like, where are you train at? And right away, we know, like, the, someone, know the professors, and that person becomes, like, you feel like you know that person for years, you know? And Jiu-Jitsu itself, by training, by being on the mat, sweating with each other, it's just uh, a very strong connection, you know, like make us a very strong connection. So to pick, to, for me to pick one of subjects today, I like to, you know, emphasize on that. The brotherhood, it's very special in Jiu-Jitsu. And like I mentioned before, brotherhood with integrity, you know, with respect, with values that we learn in Jiu-Jitsu, we can apply in our lives and almost like a formula, you know, every time we lost, we don't know what to do. And we go back to what is what is the real values, what is the roots of this? And that way you always something clears up and give us a clear path for jiu-jitsu and also outside jiu-jitsu as well, you know. It's nice, you know, that's uh exactly it. You know, it's funny, we, we both went to the the brotherhood, and I think it's something that uh everyone feels, you know, I think it's one of the unique things about GB, particularly with so many schools around the world now i think we're over 900 schools and uh you can put on your gi and go to any school in the world and it feels like your home school uh it's a unique aspect i believe of gb that i'm very grateful for and um it's Me also something that uh you know i'm grateful for is the person on the other side of this, this camera professor flavio you know and if we jump to uh the values again uh you know i have to credit like you said, uh, Professor Felipe, a lot of my values, I think I have instinctively, but GB has really uh, illuminated many of these uh, good values that uh, we have and certainly development with Professor Flavio. It's uh, something that uh, a true a true leader, by example, Flavio, that uh, I think you pull everyone forward. I, I look at uh, you and I think, man, if, if you're giving the blueprint to everyone. If you're an athlete and you come to Arizona, the blueprint is there. It's just on you to do the work. If you're uh, on the, the more office side and you want to be the best office worker you can, the blueprint is there. So it's a unique uh, characteristic, Flavio. You're like a one percenter that uh, everything you do, you go all in, uh, whether it is on the work or jujitsu or even like Professor Felipe and I were talking about brotherhood. You are a... Uh, very very good friend as well so Flavio why don't I pass it to you you've uh, been around obviously Master Carlos your whole life what are some of the, the values for you that have stood out well first thank you so much for your kind words Ryan it means a lot man I look up to you so much and Furao and that's the thing about Gracie Baja I know it's a brotherhood that we all uh, inspire one another you know but it's uh, special for me to hear that uh, coming from you um Man, it's it's hard to pinpoint something. I think we all struggle to find something specific to talk about the core value. So how about I just bring a story that is on the Gracie Baja Foundations program. And I think is a, a, perhaps the, the, the best story to help people understand the importance of integrity at a larger scale in the organization when big, big decisions are being made. And I'll try to be as brief as I can, but it's a story of... Uh, Gracie Baja, uh, Gracie Baja, through the leadership of Master Carlos, uh, staying truthful to who we are, having integrity uh, in a very critical moment that uh, important decisions were being made. And I'm, uh, let's go back to the year of 2005 when uh, the headquarters was being established in Irvine. I wasn't here, Furan wasn't here, but at that point in time, the UFC was booming in the United States and there was this trend within the jiu-jitsu community that was much smaller back then to uh, to 
start stop teaching on the gi and only focusing on ogi and primarily teaching classes that would be uh, geared towards mma right and um master carlos at that point in time he was opening gracie baja huge pressure just like all of us feel you know starting school from scratch you know there was no gracie baja schools around jiu-jitsu wasn't as well known back then as it is now so it's like you have this huge pull towards becoming something you're not so you can uh, profit from it, right? So he was faced with this tough decision, crossroads, right? If I go right and I take the gear off and start teaching MMA, perhaps my school is gonna make, uh, is gonna grow faster because that's where the market supposedly was going. But if I go right and I continue to be who I am, teach traditional jujitsu with the gi, the same way that the Gracie family has practiced from the beginning, perhaps I'm not going to be as appealing to this marketing trend, but I'm going to be truthful to who I am. At the end of the day, people would rather have authenticity than to consume something that is unauthentic and it's not exactly aligned with those things that you stand for. And I believe uh, when Master Carlos made that decision and other instructors in the in the in those times as well, they uh, we all living on that legacy. You know, if it wasn't for that decision, imagine if Gracie Barra took the gear off and started to teach MMA. Imagine what, what that would have done. Imagine if IBJJF was only doing no gear tournaments from 2005 onward, just because that was the most popular thing in the United States. Man, the, what we live from now, which is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, would not exist. Even the understanding of this word Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu wouldn't be out there. Think about it. There was this thing that people were calling, this is not Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, this is submission wrestling. This is submission wrestling. The identity of the sport needs a name. And the fact that at some point, important leaders of the, the, the jiu-jitsu community, like Master Carlos, they took a stance of integrity and sacrificed like a short-term opportunistic gain to be able to stay authentic and truthful to who we were, truthful to our legacy and our essence. It's what allowed us to be here today. So I think integrity a lot of times calls for short-term sacrifice uh, so we can have a long-term uh, gain for everybody that is involved and that decision that that story needs to be told man because we're going to come across situations like this and yeah, man uh, God bless us all I hope that we continue to make decisions somehow close to how Master Carlos made decisions when he was on those tough spots you know I like that uh, that story professor and especially what you said about um what was it? Integrity requires short-term sacrifices. Um, that's nice. It's true. It's very, very true. Okay. So um, before we move on, I just want to remind every, everyone uh, why we're here. If you're just joining us, ICP 2022, it's starting in uh, on November 8th, just after the World Summit, the following Monday. However, pre-registration opens in about a week and a half, October 18th. Make sure you sign up in our VIP list. Just click the, click the link in the Gracie Baja online bio and sign up. This way you're included in all the uh, information and you're able to take advantage of uh, GB Online's gift to you, which is a $50 registration discount, coupon, a personal branding course, and access to the Canva design platform for one month. You'll save uh, $164. So again, just click the link in our bio. Make sure you stay up to date. All right, so one of the courses on the, the ICP um, that's uh, new this year, it's building on this topic of uh, the GB values. Um, and uh, Flavio, I'll, I'll start with you, Professor. Um, so there's a new course called The Essentials of GB. Uh, what's the purpose of this new course in the new ICP? Yeah, so for people to understand, um... The course, they need to understand what the ICP of 2022 is aiming at, right? Every ICP has a certain a big goal they were trying to accomplish with every year. And it comes from lots of research and lots of conversations within Gracie Baha to figure it out. What are the things that are the biggest challenges and the biggest opportunities that we're dealing with at a global scale across the board, right? With some regions more than others, but we all, uh, after growing so fast for the past uh, 10 years, um, we realized that there was a need to go back to basics. So the ICP of 2022 
has the core theme of going back to basics, okay? And how do we go back to basics? How we, do we deliver on that promise that the ICP of 2022 is, uh, is uh, making? Uh, there's two ways, and the one that we're focusing on today uh, is the Gracie Baha Essentials, the new course, right? Uh, what is it first, before I say the purpose behind it? It is a, a course that covers the basics of teaching, right? From a novice instructor to a very senior instructor, we all can benefit from resurfacing back to, you know, the, the most simple level to make sure that we're doing uh, everything the right way within our schools, right? So it's a course that is primarily done by videos and it covers the main elements, uh, both in practical terms, but also the theory behind it that somebody needs to understand to be able to create a great uh, training experience for their students in their school, right? So we're gonna talk uh, in depth about the warm up. Why do we line up students senior most to junior most? The importance of the attendance cards. How do you correct students when they practicing the technique? How is it that you coach your students during training? All of that stuff that is basic, uh, and it's really like the foundation of this experience, but a lot of times can go uh, unnoticed or can even be overlooked. And the reason being is because uh, Gracie Baja has grown so much for 10 years and it continues to grow, but it's also innovated a lot. There's a lot of things that someone needs to know and understand to, became, to become a master teacher, right? So making this intentional efforts to rescuing what's essential what is the rice and beans? What is it that makes this the Gracie Baja experience is going to be so beneficial for everyone? And then to answer your question, Ryan, more directly, the purpose. The purpose is to empower every new instructor and to remind our seasoned instructors of what is the rice and beans? What is the essence that makes Gracie Baja Gracie Baja? Those things that are a must for you to be able to run your classes in such a way that not only offers a great experience to your students, but also aligns with what everybody else is doing at Gracie Baja schools all over the world. Because a lot of people are confused by that. You know, they say, but I have a better warm up. Instead of doing jumping jacks like this, maybe we should do like this. Look, man, the best warm up is the warm up that everybody else is doing. Yeah, you could do jumping jacks like this, you could do jumping jacks like that. But the point here is that we have to be united and aligned on the way we teach jiu-jitsu. We can still add our own personal touches to everything that we do. There, there are some core principles, some core elements. The essence of what we do that needs to stay the same so we can continue to be the same. Yeah, you know, and building off this this uh, earlier conversation, uh, it re really, really taps into the brotherhood, right? I mean, it gives everyone on the team every man, woman, child, that same experience that we all know and love, uh, no matter where, where they train. And uh, this idea, I think we're going to get into it, the, um, uh, the, these actual essential elements, they're all formed in integrity, right? Making sure that it's the best, uh, the best things that we can do as instructors to provide that same experience, um, mm -hmm. whether they're in Rio or Irvine or London or wherever, right? And ultimately building into that last uh, core value of development, um, it's going to allow us all to grow uh, together, united as one team. So uh, I'm curious, Professor Flavio, if you can share um, what are the fundamental elements that build these essentials of GB? Look, we have a list, Ryan, but uh, we are putting the course together as we speak. And this list, they're dynamic, they evolve, you know, we have a reference, but we also kind of like teaching a class, you know what you're going to teach, but sometimes in the middle of the class, you might make adjustments here and there. So I don't want to give a definite list, but uh, the list that uh, exists right now covers elements such as what is the first experience you want our students to have when they first walk into the school. The school is clean, it's organized. There's a staff member, typically an instructor, a program director who is there on the uniform to greet them and to smile at them and to help them any way they can, 
right? And then they come to the school, you know, the, the second part is preparation for the class. You pick up your tennis card. There's the typical like conversation, the hezenya, right? That is happening in between uh, the training partners before they enter the match and sometimes the instructor engages. And then how do you open a class, right? They, they come, they line up, they have the tennis card in their hands. How do we line them up? Why is it that we have white marks on the mats? And why is it that we don't do warm up in circles, but we do warm up with people staggered on the mats on a zigzag formation? Um, and then we're going to talk about the warm up per se and what's the body language, the tonality of the instructor's voice. What exactly is the sequence of movements and how should those movements be performed, right? Then we're going to talk about the demonstration of techniques. How do you demonstrate techniques when we have, you know, 30, 40 students? in a class or when you have two or three? And what are the angles that you should take? Uh, should you make eye contact with your students? What's the, 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 the tonality of your voice? Uh, how long should that demonstration be? 10 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes? How many times should you repeat the move and how? Man, just going off here, there's a lot, right? And it's all the basic stuff that a lot of times gets overlooked, right? And I just go over the first three topics, right? And I'm gonna skip everything else because it goes in chronological order. And then we're gonna wrap this up with the ending of the class, right? Which is, <clears throat> it should be probably, if, if you do this right, the ending of your class should be one of the best moments of the class, right? It's kind of the sunset of a day. If you live a great day and you watch a sunset, you're like, man, this was an epic day, right? So how do you, how do you close a class in such a way that you create an experience that's going to make your students go home and want to come back, right? So we're going to talk a lot about that. So anyways, that is a little bit of a, a sneak peek of what this is going to be. Like I said, it's still in production, but it's set to make a difference. Right on the first week of the ICP, hopefully, whoever goes through this is going to feel re-energized or empowered to be able to go to the mats and, and improve their classes right away. Well, I have to share uh, one, one thing here because um, one of those essential foundations you mentioned, at least for now, that's being created, or I should say documented, the end of class message. And uh, when I first uh, moved to the United States, it's going to be uh, nine years, 10 years actually, next year. My roommate, um, his name is Regis. And, uh, you know, Master Carlos says on one of his ICP videos that uh, jiu-jitsu, it's, it's for everyone. But, uh, you know, there's going to be a few people that uh, they just, for whatever reason, decide it's not for them. And uh, he, he was someone that jiu-jitsu was, he, he enjoyed. But uh, what he enjoyed most and the, the reasons why he kept going to, uh, to classes, it was to hear Professor Flavio's end of class message. <laughs> So these uh, <laughs> essential uh, uh, essentials of GB, they certainly hold their place, their value. And uh, I know from my experience, I've been lucky to watch many of the, the best uh, instructors of GB. I still have many, many more that I want to see teach and absorb what they do. But they certainly all have the same framework to their classes where they uh, build off and add their own personality to it. And it makes something very special uh, to be a part of. So I'm very, very excited to learn more about this uh, essentials course, Professor Flavio. Uh, and with that, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll switch gears here to Professor, Professor Farron. Am I, how is that professor? Getting close, getting close. <laughs> <laughs> so That's a hard word to hard to pronunciate food on, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, obviously you've been a part of GB for, uh, uh, you know, so, so many years now. And you've been given the uh, unique, very unique opportunity to not only teach at the headquarters in Irvine, uh, but uh, a few years ago you were given the, the honor of becoming the head instructor of the HQ in Irvine. I know it's not something you, you took lightly, but also for Master Carlos and uh, Professor Marcio, it also wasn't a decision that uh, they took lightly. And uh, they obviously trust you quite a lot to give someone uh, that kind of responsibility. And obviously for someone like you, you've seen many, many changes over the years. Uh, so what, what, what are some of the most significant changes that you've seen 
as a jiu-jitsu instructor? Man, that's been so many, right? So I was able to, I had the, the, the chance to teach jiu-jitsu, for example, in Brazil, you know, and uh, before, like, uh, everything was more, had, had more structure and, and more guidance, you know. Obviously, we come from a, a very strong uh, background, like our team coming from the lineage of Master Carlos Gracie Jr. We had, like, uh, already a lot of, you know, the, 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 the guidance and the way to teach and, and the values, right? But it wasn't written down. It was more, like, um, more open. And with experience, we start doing uh, your own thing. But, like, I was able – I, I had the chance to teach classes in Brazil where there was no curriculum. There was just, like, teaching – you know, class the way we, I want. And uh, sometimes that, that hap what happens is, since I was young and my goal was to be a competitor, to compete, uh, at that time, my, my understanding of a good class was a hard class with a 30 minutes warm up, with techniques that you do in competition only. And, uh, and, and sometimes you have students that, you know, the, the goals are different, right? They don't wanna, they don't wanna do the, what you're gonna do. And also, it was everybody in the same class, you know, higher belts, lower, lower belts. And some days we're planning, oh, I'm going to teach this crazy, nice move for competition. And then all white belts show up and you have to change. And you have to plan the class was like, how do, what I'm going to teach this week? What I teach last week? Are these techniques connected or not connected? What my students are missing, all right? Anyways, it was a lot of hard, a lot of much harder, you know, as a, instructor when you're paying attention on delivering a good jiu-jitsu it took a long time to develop classes and, and and do things and i think when we, we and i used to do things like this and we do our, everything that we like we can start going sometimes far from what the roots are right and the way what the way we have now you know and, and the way the program is being developed it's much better for the instructors and the students and right the idea the final the final th thing is to deliver it uh, a good jiu-jitsu with good values to our students. But as an instructor, like you're saying, it helps so much for us, you know. I can give you many examples. Like uh, now every time when I teach uh, a GB1, for example, a fundamentals class that I've been teaching for many years, I still go to, to GB online and watch Master Carlos Gracie Jr. Uh, uh, showing the technique. And then I show to my students. I feel the student has a straight connection with Master Carlos Gracie Jr., with that, and also, you know, thinking about Master Carlos Gracie Jr., his connection with the Gracie family, where he, where he learned jiu-jitsu from. It's almost a straight line coming from a jiu-jitsu studying jiu-jitsu, a student studying jiu-jitsu now in 2021 with uh, the, 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 the traditional jiu-jitsu that was teached from Master Carlos when he was uh, in the beginning, you know. And uh, another example, uh, uh, at GBHQ in Irvine, we have 10 instructors, right? Teaching classes on a daily basis. Imagine if you don't have any, any, any direction and it's like, guys, teach whatever you want. Everyone teaches a different warm up. And uh, you go in the morning, the instructor teach arm bar, the, on the night, it's takedowns only. And the noon, it's a different. So it would be like really hard for a student to, to learn, right? Imagine you go to, to college, you go to, and there's no structure. So the student, it's a great, has a lot of knowledge, but there's no guidance or anything, right? So it's pretty hard to, to learn that way. And uh, the way we have now with, uh, you know, the program, everything, you know, set, what, what you to do, the themes, right? The, the theme of the technique and all that helps so much for us instructor to be able to deliver a good jiu-jitsu to our, to our student, make it easier and uh, everything, everybody connected. If you come to GBHQ or Vine today and learn, uh, go to the GB1 class, and for some reason, you travel to, let's say, to Arizona, to Florida at the end of the week. You're going to be still learning, learning the same theme, the same, you know. Like right now, we're working on the guard week one. If you go to other Gracie Bay schools, you're also going to be working on the guard, all right? So it's just very unique and very professional the way, you know, we we're trying to deliver the jiu-jitsu to, to Gracie Bay jiu-jitsu community, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you nailed it. Um, exactly that. Um, I think that uh, we're uh, the more organized we can be with uh, our classes and down to the curriculum, the better experience, right? There's uh, 
certainly a strength in numbers. And uh, the more structure we can get, I think the more beneficial it is for everyone, instructors, students, uh, uh, not only on the mat, but off the mats. Um, Professor Flavio, is there anything you would like to compliment? Yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of like, I see a lot of people here today, guys. By the way, thank you so much for joining us live. It's super cool to see so many of my GB friends here. I think a lot of people, they're starting to teach class, uh, like novice instructors. They don't realize uh, that the act of teaching through the framework of the curriculum and the, the class structure and the Gracie Baja method is what brings Gracie Baja to life. It, it, it gets, you know, it's that action that happens every single day, every single class within our schools, the boom, Gracie Baja exists, man. It's there and it's alive. So we talk a lot about within GB, keeping the legacy alive, right? It sounds very idealistic and it's something that is to a certain extent vague. It's cool, it's beautiful, keeping the legacy alive. But it's, it's vague in a sense, what exactly do I need to do to do my part, right? To keep this legacy alive, right? And it is the act of teaching the Jiu-Jitsu of Gracie Baja to your students that keeps this legacy alive, right? And I think a lot of us might take this for granted. And we think that, ah, it's okay, man. Today, I'm not going to teach the class and the curriculum. I just, I just want to do like whatever I feel like doing it today. That is... Such a sin, man, you know, it's such a sin because you're taking away from your students the opportunity of connecting with everybody else in the organization. And all of that, you're taking away from your students the opportunity of connecting with uh, what the organization stands for that week because it's always evolving, you know. So it is a big deal, man, what the Professor Furon described. is a big deal. It came from an angle of, you know, of uh, how the, the, the curriculum impacted uh, the experience of the students and made the life of the instructor so much easier, right? And it released a lot of the energy that we used to put into what am I going to teach today so we could actually focus on um, building relationships, meaningful relationship with our students on the mats, you know? And that's, that's one side of it that is very important. But the other side of it is the side of the connection, you know? And back, going back to your first conversation, Ryan, was about the core values, you know? When you teach through the method, you are connecting with the legacy. You are teaching with integrity. And the opposite is also true. If you teach outside of the method, you're breaking a chain of legacy that started a long time ago, right? So you might be teaching a great class, but you're lacking integrity. And it's important that we learn how to operate through these core values to make sure that we're doing the very best that we can, not just for Gracie Baja, but for our school, because ultimately it comes down to making our schools as big and as strong as they can be, you know, so we can make a living from jujitsu and, and provide a good life for our families, but also to leave a legacy, right? You want your school to last for a long time. You want it to create champions on and off the mats. And to do that, you need to make sure that it starts with a simple act of starting your class on time, teaching through the curriculum, making sure that you are teaching for the students, not for you, all of that stuff that, again, a lot of times is considered basics. It's the essence of what makes Gracie Baja Gracie Baja, you know? Yeah, I know. And I think uh, the, uh, you know, as we talk about the instructor side of things now uh, for this, it's, um, I'm not sure for you, Professor Flavio and Professor Felipe, for me, I was always far away from the source. You know, I was in, in Canada on the East Coast, we didn't have any GB schools around, so we, uh, Master Carlos lived in my little town and Professor Marcio for a few months, and then they planted the seed, as Master says, and uh, we just kind of taught, you know, the, the way they, the way things were back in the 90s, and um, there, there was structure, I, I guess we could say definitely a structure, but it wasn't documented for us to use as instructors, and um I'm sure we can all remember it's uh, going and trying to figure out how to spend your, your hour um, was uh, not, not, not always challenging, but it was distracting. And now I'm very grateful that the only thing I have to think about when I go and teach, it's what I'm actually going to going to teach. It's the techniques and uh, it makes for a great experience for, for students. You know, I'm there. I don't have to think about a warm up or, 
uh, what's going to happen in between. It just allows me to focus on the one thing I want to do, which is teach jujitsu. And as an instructor, uh, it makes my class better because that's the only thing I'm thinking about going in. Uh, so much so, I mean, sometimes if you ask me for the warm up, it's like on autopilot in my head. I have to not think about it and just do it because it's just part of this this experience. Um, but uh, yeah, I know. And, and so instructor side, but if we go to the, the student side, um, Professor F F Ferron, I'll say. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll document this on video. We'll have it for, for years and you can see my, my improvement. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as we move now, we start to get towards the end of our conversation now more about what this means to the student. And, um, you know, I shared when we started, I went to the HQ. Uh, I was uh, a blue belt back then many years ago. Uh, Professor Marcio was teaching. Uh, I think Professor Otavio was actually just arriving in the U.S. teaching at the HQ. And uh, for us, again, we were so uh, disconnected from everything. We didn't have the ICP back then like we do now. And we were still in that mode where the first 30 minutes was a warm-up of class. It was like, get us, I think we used to say, uh, training starts when you're tired. So the whole point was the first 30 minutes, people would be like, almost to the point of death and then we can start training and teaching and then i remember the first time we went to the hq professor marcy was teaching and it was the same seven minute warm-up that we have today and my experience as a student was wow that was much better i, I actually got to learn three techniques my jujitsu improved it was just such a better uh, experience than uh what we had been used to you know so um, that's just my personal experience as a student. And uh, but I'm curious, Professor Felipe, for you at the HQ, you've had so many people from the world come through uh, and train with you. What do you think has been the biggest um, change or this uh, improvement from a student perspective on, on these changes? Well, I think that for the students, right, which is the final, the final line, like how we want to the everything we do is for them right for them to learn all this all this what we're talking about now the the training to be a good instructor the the final purpose of that is for our students to have a good quality jiu-jitsu with a good experience right because good quality jiu-jitsu nowadays with the internet you can go you can search you, you find great moves but the experience when you're inside the school to be able to to feel good right some students like uh, we see testimonials on a daily basis where maybe the person had a stressful day and they go to the jiu-jitsu school. A lot of the times, not necessarily to learn the new move of jiu-jitsu, but, but just to be there, to be connected with the, the team, to the friends, and just have this hour of the day where you forget about the, the regular, the word, and just think about, you know, positive things in jiu-jitsu. But uh, one of the, the most important things I think I think is the expectation of the students of when they come into the class, right? For example, to illustrate here, to kind of give a better explanation. Let's say today I'm tired. I, 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 did a, I had a stressful day and uh, yesterday I ran and my knees are sore and, I, and there's time for a jiu-jitsu class, right? Let's say if I don't know how the class is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be hard. I don't know if the warm-up is going to be long or not, if it's take down or not. So maybe I would think, oh, I'm not sure if I go to jiu-jitsu today because I don't know how it's going to be. What, is the, what if we, my professor decides to do a competition class today? I'm not into the competition today. I just want to train lighter or the other way around. Oh, I want to push myself, but maybe today the class will be lighter. I want to go just to train hard. Anyways, the way, the, way uh, the, the expectation of the students is they know what to expect on the class. They know the warm-up will be the same. They know, okay, there's different types of levels. They can go that time, it'll be a basic class, GB1. It can go a different time, it'll be no gi, it'll be advanced. That time, it'll be sparring only, live training. And it's much easier for, for everybody to plan. Not only talking about the structure of the class as well, as far as technique, but, but also like uh, knowing that the class is going to start on time and finish on time, right? Because uh, when I first started training Jiu-Jitsu, it was more like, okay, the training begins at lunch, but didn't have much like a time to finish, right? Some people leave, some people stay three hours on the mats. Some days the class start a little bit late. 
And uh, anyways, now it's much easier for everybody to plan. Oh, you know, the class start on time, finish on time. And then they have this after, you know, it's easier for everybody to plan with the family. So the, 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 the commitments that we have outside jiu-jitsu. And uh, at the end of the day, it's just the expectation to know what the class is going to be, how the, the intensity, even for like to know what techniques going to be on that class, right? If you go to GB1, it tells it the techniques that's going to be working on that week. If the person is traveling, let's say I'm going to travel and I'm going to miss a whole week. So I know which type of uh, week I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss the side control. So when I come back, I need to make sure I do a recap on side control. So it's very easy to learn and, and, to, and to plan the training and to have a, nice, a better quality, you know, learning jiu-jitsu for all our students, you know. Well said, you know, that's a great point. Even uh, even now, you know, it's something that uh, I, I had a similar experience that Jiu-Jitsu had a start time, but uh, we didn't really have an end of class time, right? So it's nice to know uh, you're, you're going to be in and out in an hour or if you stay in training an extra half hour or an hour. Um, yeah, it's great. Very nice for, for students and uh, for instructors too. But as... Uh, we start to wrap this up, Professor Flavio. I'm just going to bring it back to you to see if there's uh, anything you want to add from what you've seen over the years to the student experience. I think we've become more efficient with the, the act of teaching and learning jiu-jitsu. You know, uh, uh, there is this uh, there is this commitment to efficiency when we practice jiu-jitsu, right? You want to find the path of least resistance to get it to, from point A to point B that's what a technique is, you know, it's really a template of getting from point A to point B uh, using the minimum amount of strength uh, possible, right? You still need some, but you want to minimize the, the waste of energy as you roll. And it's funny how it took, uh, you know, decades, you know, for jujitsu to figure it out that we should apply the same principle of efficiency or maximum efficiency to the act of teaching and learning jujitsu. You know, Fudon just said, you know, used to be on the mats for like three hours. It was, wasn't really clear what time it started. You know, it was roughly 10. And you could start at 10.30, at 11. And there was definitely no time to end. So you'd be, you'd be there for three hours. And But would you really learn jiu-jitsu in those three hours? It was a lot of conversations. It was fun. But certainly something very exclusive that a lot of people couldn't afford to squeeze on their day-to-day -day lives. So I think uh, it's this, this whole the process of... Uh, uh, documenting and establishing a framework for teaching jiu-jitsu ultimately represents that people can learn good jiu-jitsu, high-level jiu-jitsu in a much more efficient way, in a way that there's less injuries and there's definitely less time wasted and people just become better faster. I wish I had the opportunity to learn jiu-jitsu the way our students learn it now because I would be so much better. But uh, it is what it is, you know. We, I did the best, I think, with what I was given. And now it's up to our students, you know, to push everything forward because what they're getting now is so much better than what we used to get back 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, something that I look back, like, like you said, it is what it is, but I look back and, and see the opportunity that many students have now. They're, uh, they're very fortunate. And I mean, we still are, right? We still have a lot of... Uh, tools at our disposal as, as students. One of my favorite things, Professor Flavio, you say, it's uh, we're all students first, first and foremost, before anything, that uh, we can't lose that uh, that uh, part of our identity at GB, no matter you're an instructor or a school owner or whatever your role is, you're, you're a student of Jiu-Jitsu first. And uh, it's uh, definitely a great time these days to be a student of jiu-jitsu, especially with GB Online, if I can wrap this up with a, a plug for GB Online and Professor Felipe's uh, instructional coming out soon. Uh, so as we wrap this up, guys, I'm going to bring it back to both of you to uh, say goodbye to everyone. But before I do that, I uh, just have a couple messages here. Um, just one last reminder, guys. We're here to talk about the ICP 2022. Uh, so in uh, about, a, about a month now after the World Summit, course one will start. Uh, it'll be on November 8th, uh, October 18th. That's an important date. It's about a week and a half. That's when pre-registration starts. So that means you can sign up for the ICP, 
take advantage of some uh, bonuses and discounts for you and uh, make sure you're ready to go for course one. But in order to take advantage of that, you have to sign up on our VIP list. So click the bio, uh, go to our bio on GB Online's Instagram, click the link, fill out your information and join the VIP list. And you're gonna get uh, $164 of bonuses and savings. And uh, the other message guys next week, Professor Flavio and I are back on Thursday. So uh, not Wednesday, but Thursday. We're going to have professors uh, Anna Laura Cordero and Fabiana Borges joining Professor Flavio and I to talk about a very important, but also a very exciting topic at GB, which is inclusion at GB. So uh, that'll be happening this time next week, but one day from tomorrow on Thursday. All right. So with that, uh, Professor Felipe, Professor Flavio, Professor Felipe, we still have a couple minutes, so I'll give you a chance to say goodbye. Thank you so much, Professor, for being here. Thank you, Professor Ryan. Thank you, Professor Flavio. It's always a pleasure and honor to be invited to be participating on this live. And guys, tomorrow I'm flying to Texas to join the team to the, for the World Championship Nogi IBJJF. I'm competing as well. Looking forward to see everybody if you're there in Texas, in Dallas. So I'll be there tomorrow in the tournament and uh, looking forward to connect with the team and have a good time at the tournament out there too, okay? Nice. Thank Best luck, for all. Thank you, Professor. Awesome, man. Very cool. Good luck, Professor. Professor Flavio, I'll pass to you. Thank you as well for, for being here. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everybody. Guys, don't forget to add your name to the VIP list. We want to make sure that we keep a good communication. We have hundreds of people there already. And uh, we're revamping the ICP once again. We're bringing a whole new experience that uh, has a lot of people recording a bunch of stuff in Brazil. And it's really like everything is going to the next level. So you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss the boat. You want to start the ICP right in November. So by the time January comes, you already have your new certificate and everybody's realigned and ready to make 2022 the best year yet. So thank you, Ryan, for putting this together. I look forward to next week. Thank you, guys. See you next week, Professor. Thanks, Professor Felipe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.